So determine the force in each member of the truss and state if the members are in tensional compression. Also find the support reactions at A and B. So for this first part, where we're looking for each of the forces in the members of the truss, because we're looking for all the forces, not just like a particular member, um, the most appropriate method is probably method of joints. So that's the one I'm going to apply. You could also use method of sections, but you're going to take, need to take a few cuts in order to um, get all the different member forces that you're looking for. So I'm going to apply method of joints. The first thing I'm going to do is draw the free body diagram of this system. So let's just copy across the shape of the truss. And we have some external forces. We have 600 newtons and 900. And each of these is a pin support, so it's going to have a horizontal and a vertical component. So I'll call this AX and AY and BX and BY. So let's just label all of the different joints. Alright, so I think we're ready to start. So we want to start with um, a joint where we can only have two unknowns on the joint. Um, if we have more than two unknowns, we're not going to be able to solve um, because we only have two equilibrium equations. We can use sum of forces in X and sum of forces in Y. So I think the best choice um, is probably to start at joint D here because we're only going to have the unknown of these two member forces. And we, of course, know the 600. So that's where my starting point is. And we're going to walk, work our way down, basically. So at this joint, we have the 600 pushing on it. We're going to also have forces through these two um, members. Now we can probably take a guess at what directions these are going to be. So if this force is applied to the left, we need to counteract it with a force to the right. And that's going to can only come from this member because it's the only one that has another X component. So this is FDE. And now that this one is pointing upwards, this one is going to have to counteract that and point downwards. And it's going to be FCD. Now, we're going to need to know the angle that this force is applied at. And because all of our truss members are two force members, um, the direction of the force is going to be in the direction of the member itself. So we can solve for, say, this angle in here. It's going to be the same as that angle in there as well um, for this member. So let's go ahead and find it. So from this big triangle, I'll use the big one, we can get the angle as being 10 inverse of the opposite side, which is going to be 8, whoop, divided by the adjacent side, which is 6. And this comes out to be 53.13 degrees. So that's the angle in here and also in here when we get to it. So let's mark it on our diagram. And now we can apply our equilibrium equations. So I'm going to start with forces in the x direction because this is the only one that's got an x component. If we started with y, we'd have both of them in the equation and we wouldn't be able to solve directly. We'd have to do simultaneous equations. So if we start with x, we're going to have FDE. It's going to be the cos side of the triangle. And this is going to be in the negative x direction. So it's minus 600. So solving for FDE it comes out to be 1,000 newtons. And this one is pushing onto the joint, so that means it's going to be a compression member. All right. So now we can apply oop, the forces in the y direction to be equal to zero. So we now know FDE is 1,000. So it's going to be 1,000 sine 53.13 going up here. This one is going downwards, so minus FCD. That doesn't have a Y component, so it doesn't end up in the equation. And we can solve for FCD. It comes out to be 800 newtons. We also need to think about the tensional compression. So this is pulling down away from the joint, so it's going to be a tension member. All right, so now that we've solved these, we can go back and put them onto our diagram. So um, FDE, first of all, has um, 1,000, and it was pushing onto the joint, so it's in compression. 
We also need to apply the other force because it's a two force member. So this is 1000. And for CD, we've got 800 in tension. So that means it's pulling away from each joint and 800 in here. All right, so now we need to pick another joint to have a look at. Again, we want to pick one that's got no more than two unknowns. So if we were to look at E, we'd see that we'd have three unknowns, the force in these three members. So that's not a good choice. However, if we look at C, it's probably a good one because we've only got this one and this one as unknown. So let's draw the free body diagram at C. All right, so we know that we have this 800 newtons pulling up through this member. We've got 900 going to the left, and we've got a horizontal and a vertical force um, through these members. So we can again pretty much guess the direction these are going to be straight up. So if this one's going to the left, that one's going to have to be going back to the right, and we'll call it CE. And if this one's going up, this one's going to have to go down, and that's going to be the force in BC. Now this one's really easy, because there's only like two things in X and Y that are going to have to directly equal each other. So if we sum in the X direction to be 0, we're going to find that FCE has to be 900 to balance it all out. And if we sum in the Y direction, we know that FBC is going to have to be 800 to balance it all out. The compression and tension of these members, so FCE is pushing onto the joint, so it's going to be in compression. This one here is pulling away from the joint, so it's going to be in tension. So that's another two answers there. So we should go back and put these onto our free body diagram up here. So FCE is um, this one here. We've got it in compression, so it's going to be pushing 900. And this one is in tension, so it's pulling away, and it's going to be 800. All right, so we have a couple of options now um, as to what um, way we go with it, I think. Oh, actually, that's a lie. So if we go to B, for example, we're going to have three unknowns. We've got BX, BY, and the member, so that's not a good choice. If we go to A, we've got AX, AY, and again a member, so we've got three unknowns. That's not good. Um, so the next one we probably want to pick is actually E, because uh, we're only going to have the two members that we need to determine. So let's go and draw the free body diagram at E. Um, we're going to need some angles for um, where everything is applied at for these two members. So this one, it's going to be at an angle of 53 degrees. We've already worked that out. This one in here, um, from the fact that this is like symmetric, this triangle in here, this angle is going to have to equal this angle. So it's also going to be a 53.13 degree angle. So that's going to help us out. So let's draw the free body diagram at E. Might try and fit it in here. All right, so we've got this force here of 1000, and we said it's at the angle of 53.13. We've got the force of 900 pushing on here, 900 newtons, and we're going to have forces through these two members. And I'm going to take a guess at the directions. So I'm going to guess this one's going up. Um, I'm going to call it FAE. And let's guess that this one's going down. I'll call it FBE. And remember, if they come out as being negative, that just means that we had the direction wrong on the diagram and we need to flip it over. So the angles we can put in. This one's at 53.13 degrees. This here is also at... 53.13 degrees. It's getting a little bit messy, but anyway. <laughs> All right, so we need to solve for the unknowns um, off the diagram, these two here, and we can do that by using our two, two, two equations simultaneously this time, um, simply because both of them have x and y components. So I'll start with forces in the x direction have to be zero. So we're going to have FAE this one here, the cos side of the triangle. We're going to have a component from FBE. Again, it's going to be the cos side of the triangle. We're going to have this 900 pointing back, so it's going to be minus 900. And we've got a component, oh, that should have been 1000, not 100. Um, again, pointing back, so it's going to be negative. 
All right, so that's our equation in the x direction. It's going to be a little bit icky. Um, we can simplify down these numbers if we want. So cos of um, 53.13 is equal to 0.6. We've got that here, so it's another 0.6. And if I put these two together and flip them to the other side of the equation so they become positive, it's 1500. So I'm going to call this equation 1, and we're going to have to get another equation and solve it simultaneously. So now for the y direction. So FAE, the way I've drawn it, has a positive y component. It's going to be the sine side of the triangle. This one has a negative y component. This doesn't have a y component, so I leave it out. And 1000 is going down. It's going to be the sine as well. All right, so we've ended up with sine 53.13 in every single term there and zero on the other side. So if we divide everything by 53, sine of 53.13, um, it's going to drop out of the equation. So this, this, and this will cancel with each other. So it simplifies it a little bit. And I'm going to need to solve these simultaneously, so I may as well rearrange it for one of these and substitute it in up here. So if I go for FAE, it's going to be equal to FBE plus 1000. All right, so now I'm going to substitute equation 2 in equation 1. So I'm going to get 0 0.6. Now FAE here is being replaced. So it's FBE plus 1000. If I expand this out, I'm going to get 0 0.6 FBE plus 600 plus 0 0.6 FBE equals 1500. So putting these two together, we get 1.2. And flicking this to the other side, it becomes 900. So FBE is equal to 900 divided by 1.2, and that is 750 newtons. It's come out positive, which means that I had the correction on the correct direction on the diagram for this force. So if we scroll back up to have a look at FBE, it was this one here. It's pulling away from the joint, so that means it's going to be a tension member. So that's another answer. So now we just need to figure out what FAE is, and we have our equation here that we can just substitute straight into. So FAE is equal to FBE, and we just solve this to be 750 um, plus the 1000. So FAE is then equal to 1750 newtons. And thinking about the direction of this one, so we have at the moment FAE pushing onto the joint. That was the correct direction because it came out positive when we solved the equations. So that's going to mean that it's a compression member. Cool. So now we've pretty much solved for all of the um, member forces within the truss. So if we go back up, we can put on our answers. Yep. So this one we said was a compression member and it's 1750. And this one came out to be a tension member, and it was 750. All right, so the only other part that we need to complete is working out what the support reactions are, AXAY and BXBY. So we can draw um, the free body diagrams at both of those joints and get those last um, quantities out. So at A, We had the force coming down through the member, which was 1750 newtons, and it was applied at an angle of 53.13 degrees. And we also had the two reaction forces, AX and AY, which I'd taken already a guess at the directions of. So if we go ahead and sum, go with the X direction first, we're going to have AX minus 1750 cos 53.13 must be 0. So AX works out to be 1050 newtons. 
We can then sum in the y direction to be 0. And we're going to get that ay minus 1750 sine 53.13 has to be 0, which makes ay 1400. All right. So that's one set of the reactions. The other set is going to come from drawing the free body diagram at B, as discussed. So we're going to have the two member forces, plus Bx and By. Alright, so I had drawn Bx like this, and By like this, and we have the force coming up of 800 through one member. So 800. And we had the force coming up here through the other member, which was 750. And we knew that the angle, like before in here, was 53.13 degrees. So if we sum our forces in the x direction to be 0, I think we're going to find that this is actually the wrong way. Oh, sorry, the right way. So it's going to be bx minus 750 because of 53.13 has to be 0. So this flips to the other side and it becomes positive, which tells us we have the correct direction. So it works out to be 450 newtons. And summing forces in the y direction, I think we're going to find that this one is incorrect um, because both of these have um, upwards pointing um, forces. So this needs to be pointing down to counteract it. So let's flip it over now, make it go down. So in the y direction, we're going to have 750 um, sine 53.13 plus 800 minus by is zero. So solving for this, by becomes 1400 newtons. So that's the other answer. So if we want, we can go back and finalize our free body diagram with all of our different values drawn on it. So we said that um, AX came out to be 1050. We said that AY came out to be 1400. BX we had come out to be 450. And we had by come out to be 1,400, but I had the direction wrong on this diagram. It's actually downwards. Uh, sorry, 1,400. Alrighty, so that's all there is for this question, and uh, I'll see you in another video.